Additionally, uh, an advice columnist <laughs> working for uh, uh, teenage magazines uh, would be writing 100% for girls. That's their audience. Um, certainly for me, 15 years ago, when I first started as an, as an agony uncle, uh, I, was, I was taking questions from girls and I was writing for girls. Um, 15 years ago, boys didn't have problems. Um, as we all know, they grew up um, hardwired, knowing how to, to deal with uh, all manner of issues um, that would hit them. Um, now, obviously, that, that changed for me around about 1996 when I had a call from um, a company called America Online. And uh, they, they phoned and said that they had just set up um, a business here, and there was about, I think it was about 15 staff. And uh, they were an internet service provider, and they had to explain to me what the internet was. And um, they asked me whether or not I would like to do a, uh, an online chat to, to mark World AIDS Day. And um, being quite geeky, I thought that sounded interesting, doing something with computers. And um, it actually completely blew me away for one single fact, which was that over half the questions that I was getting during this, this live chat were from boys or from young men. Um, and it, it basically woke me up to the fact that at last, here was a medium that not just young men, but, but young women as well, were, were comfortable with. Um, it was a way for them to, to open up. And I started thinking about why this was, for all the reasons that really we've, we've discussed, that it's, it's anonymous, um, I think, I think men and machines have quite a good relationship. Um, they, they like talking to each other, it's cold, it's emotionless, um, which is a, a good thing. And whilst um, the press was kind of getting carried away as the internet took off with, with the, what is your child doing upstairs as he's talking to paedophiles and stuff, um, I, I was kind of seeing that actually they were looking for, looking for help, looking for advice, looking to each other um, for support. Um, and I, I kind of didn't really um, set a very good example. I bullied AOL into um, giving me a, an advice, a regular advice column. I said, look, you know, th there is an audience here. There is a need for this. Um, we should do it. And um, they agreed. And uh, we set up a kind of a, like an, an advice channel. It was really a very traditional magazine agony column. Um, and that you would go to this, this page and um, there would be uh, three questions a week and three answers. And then that would go into a, an archive. Um, I was often asked, what are the questions, uh, as I am now, what kind of questions do, do young men and women ask? Um, and it's really across the board. It, it's anything from sex to relationships, trouble at home, trouble at school, college, the workplace, mental health issues, questions about drugs, questions about bullying. Um, it's actually exactly the same between men, young men and young women. The big difference, um, and it, this is changing, but generally the big difference is that um, young women are very quick to ask for help whereas uh, young men tend to only ask for help when that problem has turned into a crisis. So uh, as an example, you might get a young woman who writes in and says, I've, I've fallen out with my best mate uh, yesterday and I don't know how to, to sort it out. Um, a young man might write in and say, I fell out with my best mate three terms ago. He's turned everyone against me. I, I can't stand it at school and I want to kill myself. So it's the same problem. It's just that young men were finding it very difficult to actually open up about this. I have to say, I think this is changing now, certainly with our experience with Arsenal site. Um, young men are, are quicker to do that, and I think um, there, are, there are lots of reasons. I think that, that um, being digital natives, they've grown up with this, uh, with this technology. They're much more comfortable about using it. I think young men's role models have changed, whereas 15 years ago it was archetypal hard men like Arnie and Sly, and now it's uh, Jamie Oliver, who's a, a crook, uh, Russell Brand, who's happy to wear, wear makeup. So these things are changing. Um, for a good, in a, in a, in a good way. Um, with AOL, we ran this channel for about 10 years, but it, it actually turned into a bit of a monster for me. Um, as the internet took off, and so the audience grew, um, as I say, I was uh, answering three questions a week, and at its height, was receiving 2,000 questions a month. Um, and I would go through every question, but I wasn't actually answering those <coughs> questions, because uh, it's very important to me that we don't just reply back to an email from a young person, because we don't know their situation. Um, I could only answer three questions in, in a public forum. And very often I get questions, I get a repeat email saying, why haven't you answered my question? If you don't answer my question, I'm going to kill myself. And this didn't sit easily on my conscience. I felt that there was a huge demand here, um, and it just wasn't being, wasn't being supplied. We weren't, we weren't meeting this demand. Um, so I, I put together a two-page proposal, um, really for the kind of advice, column, uh, advice channel that I would, like to, would have liked to have seen. And I'd worked with YouthNet for some time, and I trusted them, and I liked the work that they'd done with the site.org. And, um, and I took it to them. And um, I was delighted to see that they, they took it, they developed it, they raised funds for it. 
And um, the result is Ask the Site, which, as, as Martin said, um, has been running for several years now. Um, we answer every question from 16 to 24 year olds in the UK within three working days. That, that's an undertaking that, that we have always delivered. Um, we do so in complete confidence. We, we absolutely understand the importance um, of, of not compromising someone's identity. When people write in, they have to know that, that we're not going to broadcast their, their question. They get their answer delivered to them in, in a very confidential way. <coughs> um, and again, the, the experts are across the board. They're from the Samaritans, they're from Brooklyn, they're from Drugsco. These are people that, that know what they're talking about. Um, and. Uh, what I like about YouthNet, what I like about our society is that they don't just sit back once they've, they've created a service that, that, that meets <coughs> this demand. I think they're very aware that young people are constantly bending technology to their own, to, to their own ends to, to, so that they can get the information and the advice that they need. So YouthNet are working to make sure that they're there when um, young people need the information and advice um, and it's always balanced and it always empowers them to make decisions for themselves so that they can get on with their 